Is Yeshua of Nazareth, is he the last Passover? Is Yeshua Hanotri, Yeshua of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, the world calls Jesus of Nazareth. Some of the Hebrews, black Hebrews and Israelites may refer to him as Yehawashai of Nazareth is Yeshua Hanotri. Is he the last Passover? Heard about this question even before, but it's interesting that we hear this within like the black conscious uh, circles, even like Sarnetta. Sarnetta has addressed this and asked certain black Hebrews and Hebrew Israelites to basically weigh in on whether Yahawashai, the one who they call Yahawashai, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua ha Notri, whether he is the last Passover. I think points of references are made to the epistle to the Hebrews, and I think particularly chapter 10, maybe the first, uh, I think 10 or so verses, if I'm correct, the first 10 or so verses. And what is written there has led some to the conclusion that Yeshua Hanotri, Jesus of Nazareth, and we identify of Nazareth because this is how the scriptures, according to what is written, Yeshua HaNotsuri. We also know there was other ones who may have had a name similar or the same name as Yeshua, right? But we're speaking about Yeshua HaNotsuri, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the Mashiach Yeshua, right? HaMashiach Yeshua. We're speaking about Robeno, Robeno, Ainai Rabbi. The rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because Yeshua is our rabbi, right? We, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, those Yehudi even in the first century who admitted, yea and, and amen, right? Anim amen, ki Yeshua ha right? You know, like he is, you know, the Messiah. I Yeshua, Yeshua Hanotri. But is he the last Passover? Now, one's asked this question, and some of the Chabarim, some of us also in reasoning and hearing this question out there, Sarnetta had this particular question on his platform. Some of the black Hebrews and Hebrews like to no doubt this question coming up in the season. Right? We're actually in the season. One of the reasons for the season is the season of Pesach. Hebraically referring to Passover as Pesach. Right? So, firstly, foremostly, is let's just answer this question. How would we answer this sort of a question? Right? Aras, Yadin, Yadin, Yadinos. Right? Yadin, how would you answer this question? How would I and I answer this question? Right? How are we, the black Jews, Rastafari, Yehudi, how do we answer this question? A yes or no with explanation. Right? I answer yes or no, but with explanation. Because the key is the details. The divinity is really in the details. Right? And not having the details of it. Just hearing this general question from a Western Gentile, Christianity from a popular Christianity or a white Western Christianity, that's a popular Christianity, whitewash Christianity. We already know how most ones will be inclined to answer. And they will believe this is what the Bible, even in the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha, the renewed covenant scriptures that's called the New Testament, says. It's not what it says, but in answering the question, we'll say no. What is it? I can say no. Isn't isn't he the Passover lamb? According to the question, Yeshua Hanotri, is he the last? And the emphasis on this last Passover. Is he the last Passover? Once again, I think that most ones and ones depends on whether they are really rooted and grounded, as even the Messiah himself, Yeshua Ha Mashiach himself. Even he himself said to the Samaritan woman, he said that ye, y'all worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Yehudi, right? The Yehudim is of the Jews or the Judahites, right? Even we, the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yehuda. So here, here, here we say no. He is not the last Passover. The scripture says that Yeshua HaNotri, who the world calls Jesus or Jesus Christ, According to the scripture, right, he is the last Adam. 
Now that's that's a really more important my point to be understood scripturally referenced being the last Adam and we being in him and his spirit the Ruach HaKadosh the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth being in us and being in I and I right so Yeshua HaNotri Jesus of Nazareth is not the last Passover but scripture says that he is the last Adam let's go right here 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 we have first Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. What it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. And so it is written. And so it is written. So written in this reference right here, right, to the, what we'll say, the written law, right, to HaTorah, right, even the first book of Moshe, the Hebrew book that is called Bereshith, right, it is written, that's what the reference is being made, that the first man, Adam, Adam, Aleph Dam, first blood, Aleph Dam, right? Adam was made a living, a living soul. The last man, the last Adam, Aleph Dam, right? First blood, the Aleph, first letter of the Hebrew, the Ibrit, Aleph Beit, the alphabet. Right? The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now, what does quickening mean? Chabarim. What does quickening mean? Quickening means giving life, a life-giving. The, the idea is like life-giving, a life-giving spirit. So it's so important to understand because this is like still KJV 1611 right here that we're reading. This, this right here, right? 1611. But it's clear that scripture refers to Yeshua, right? Ha Mashiach, Adonainu, our sovereign, our Adon, our Lord, our sovereign, as being the last Adam, the last Adam, and thus a quickening, a life giving spirit, where the spirit of liberty is, like there the Lord is, right? The spirit, right? The irate, the spirit, right? Receiving the spirit, even the spirit of truth. So the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, right? Also, this points to the difference, and this is what we have to study, right? What does the scripture say a soul really is in the spirit? These are the first principles, as elsewhere, I think, is in the epistle to the Hebrews. That's the epistle, that's the gospel to the Israelites, Right, scattered in all Israelites. That's bringing the the gospel and the revelation of Yeshua Hanotri as being Hamushiach, the Messiah, the prophesied Messiah, bringing that about right here. But here's what Scripture says concerning last. He is the last Adam. Right, he is the last Adam. Check, check. So Yeshua Hanotri. Right? Yeshua or Yahweh, as some would say, he is the last Adam. But what about concerning the last Passover? Is he the last Passover? Right? To who? And for whom? Yeshua, Hanotri, Jesus, Yeshua of Nazareth. Is he the last Passover? For who? For whom? For Hebrews? Is he the last Passover for Hebrews? Does Hebrew really say that he is the last Passover? Or does the gospel and the epistles and the Brit Chadasha, does the scripture, the New Testament testimony, does it testify that Yeshua is our, he is our Passover in reference to the Lamb? Right, the Seha Elohim, the Lamb of the Elohim, the Seha Elohim. But who is he the last Passover for? For Hebrews, for Jews, for Israelites, or for Christians? Methinks that many nowadays Christians, many of them would say, yes, he's the last Passover. Could he have a Western, whitewashed, Gentile, um, Counterfeit Christianity is what it really is. It's counterfeit Christianity or white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the Anglo-European version, right? It's a, it's, it's a derivative, right? The Western Gentile Christianity is a bad derivative, right? And based on faulty, faulty 
reading comprehension, some basic reading comprehension, because a lot of Christians will say he's the last, and yet you cannot find one verse in the scriptures to, to substantiate that. But some would hear us say that, no, he's not the last Passover, and we're in the season, here in the season, the time, reason for the season coming forward, here, 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 even in this uh, Gregorian, right? We're in the Gregorian, um, you know, the Gregorian New Year, right? And being in this Western Gentile, this Gregorian New Year, right, is coming up in the season, like to do some, um, you know, reasoning or some important points concerning the holidays and time and, and telling time because it says that they would seek to change laws and times, right? So when is the, the true time of what is known as Pesach, right? And what is referred to as um, Passover, right? What is the true time, right? And the season is the spring, beginning in the spring season, the springtime, the Hebrew month of Abib, like to Abebe, Abebe, like to Addis Abebe, but we have it Hebrew, Abib, right? But to this point right here, concerning who Yeshua is to us, right? According to, we could say, the true divine heritage and, and theology, right, of it, according to the scripture, as is written, he is our, he is that lamb, right, that lamb. This is very interesting right here. I'd like to touch on this, looking at the tabernacle, right, the tabernacle, right, and see, that's, that takes us all the way, right, to the first, right, all the way to the first books, the Torah, right, so many ones who don't have a, a good, a good groundation, right, they don't, they, they kind of short circuit, right, they short circuit because they misconstrue and miscontextualize, Right, in a in a wrong context, take it out of the context. Now we can go through. Um, it might be needful. We can go through the chapter. I think it's chapter ten that was referred. We caught a little bit of uh, Sarnetta's, um Yahweh Shai, like is he the last Passover? It was an interesting. I think Gorilla Hebrew or Sakari uh, Sakari had had addressed it. And it's good to see, in some sense, at least here, that some ones and ones, you know, we, we do grow. Now, it's interesting because he had said that, well, we, speaking of him and I guess other, other Hebrews, black Hebrews, don't know by who wrote the book of Hebrews. We're not one of those Hebrews. We, the Ethiopian Hebrews of the royal order, the Ethiopian Hebrews after the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, we don't agree with that. We know who wrote Hebrews. Right? It was the hand of Paul, right, based on the consensus of the Council of Jerusalem. It was the Council of Jerusalem in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15. We went through it a little more in detail, that question of um, who wrote um, Hebrews, right? And some black Hebrews say they, they don't know who, who wrote the book, right? But if we do due diligence, as we're going to do due diligence on this right here, this is important to do due diligence on this subject matter right here. So here, I think it's these verses where it says to the fact, by that which will we, by that, but, but, but it says by the which will we are sanctified. Will we are sanctified. It's interesting the, the translation we have here, KJV. Sanctified through the offering of the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, the body of Jesus, the Messiah, once, it says, for all, italicized. So then it goes on to say, and every priest standing daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins, which can never take away sins, take away sins. We have to understand that what is going on at the time when Yeshua HaMoshiach became our Pesach, our Passover, our Passover lamb. What was going on? There was Passover at that time. And what does Passover signify? What does Passover signify? All right. See, this is, these are the questions we have to ask. What does Passover signify? All right. And also the twofold nature. Right. 
in Hebrew, when you get to the root of, of the Hebrew studies, there's a, there's a twofold truth. Even the Messiah, Robeno, our Rabbi Yeshua, he brought this out in his ministry and even in the Gospels, it's brought out. There's that twofold nature when he told his disciples, right, to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. The leaven, like the yeast, to say the yeast of the Pharisees. They went to a feast and they didn't eat and they came back hungry. And when Robeno, our Rabbi Yeshua, right, Adonainu, when he asked them, you know, um, Ha'adon, asked them, why didn't you eat? He said, but you said to us, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee. And he spoke about their failure to really understand or get a good understanding to come to the overstanding that they were looking at the word of what he said, but not getting the spirit. It's like when we say something in a certain way, and this is to say, right? I'm saying this to try to express a deeper truth that you have to kind of see with your mind's eye. They were kind of blind with their mind's eye. So, but it shows the twofold nature of the word. He told them to beware of the what? The leaven. Right? Because this is how the true um, Rabim, you know, the true masters of Torah, of Scripture, right? So our master, right, Robeno, our Rebbe, right, our Rabbi, because he's a Yehudi, he's a Jew, right, a black Jew, right, of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? And the proof is there in the Scripture. He says the Samaritan woman that ye your worship that which you know not, because Samaritans also claim to be Israelites. We can get into detail, but they claim to be Israelites. And he said to her that ye worship that which ye know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. I mean, need we, let's bring this up right here because ones might only be seeing this right here. And it's important to really see that this is what the Bible really testifies. Not taking one part here right, and then ignoring all the rest over here. Boom. One verse, it says red letter, right? The red letter, right? So this definitely has authority with the um, mitmanon, right? With us as the mitmanon, like the faithful ones, right? Those who that um, ani ma'amin, you know, that that have faith, right? Ki Yeshua, you know, ki Yeshua, you know, that Yeshua is ha-mushiach, who? that he is the Moshiach, the, the Messiah that was prophesied about 1900 years ago by our ancients, our ancestors, our ancients, the black Jews of the first century, right? So here he's speaking to this Samaritan woman, we could say up in the north, right, of the Levant, what's known as Palestine, the land of Canaan, or one might look at the Israel, the state of Israel as it's called, right? Right? Ye worship, ye know not what. You don't know what you're worshiping. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Yehudim, right? And let's bring this up, right? can go to the coin and also to the Hebrew, right, right here. Now, that's the unpointed Hebrew. Right, the unpointed Hebrew, right, right here. So he says, right here, he says, um, Elisha, Yadainu, 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 right, Yadainu ki ha Yeshua, the salvation mean from, right, the salvation mean from, right, like I'm looking at both of these right here. Mean ha Yehudin ha Yehudin he that the salvation is from the Yehudi is from the Yehudi because you have to understand that in this particular time right in this the context is the context of what was said yes what was said according to what is written is a testimony of what is said but the best way to get a good reading comprehension, comprehending, well, what is, what's, what does this mean? What did it mean then? Right? Because a lot of ones will take these, these areas of scripture. This is what counterfeit Christianity, Western Gentile, Wasp Christianity, White Anglo-Saxon, Protestant Christianity of these latter days and time, the confusion that kind of Babylon, right, has done, has confused ones, ones, all these different ones take this verse to mean that, ignoring the real context. See, he's speaking to a Samaritan woman, and the Samaritans believe that they were following the true, you could say the true Israelite rites and rituals, 
right? But the Yehudi disputed whether they were even ethnically Yehudi, ethnically Yisrael, Yasharel, whether it was ethnically Israel, right? There's a dispute. Now, that's getting into some background history, but this is important, right? When taking the verse, right, out of its context, but what's very clear is what the Messiah says for salvation is of the Yehudim, Ha-Yehudim, is of the Yehudi, is of the Judahites, the Judeans, of those of the tribe of Judah. And he's pointing to this woman and others like her who worship. Yes, they worship. Because if you read the context of it, she's talking about her forefathers, so forth and so on. And to a Yehudi, to a Judahite, that's like a laugh. Right? From a Yehudi, a black Jew, ethnic Israel perspective, right? That's like a laugh in that sense that your fathers, but your forefathers were not of Israel, Yaiko, were not of Jacob, are not of the seed of Jacob. They were converted, but then they brought in a lot of other right, beliefs, other ideas. You can see this historically in the Old Testament books between like Judah, the southern kingdom. This is why Yehuda, the Judahites, the Jews, the Yehudi were the last standing to represent all 12 tribes of Israel, right? And largely that has been linked with the prophecy and the covenant that was made by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, by the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, with Right, that covenant that was made with the house of da with David and with David's house, right, and also the blessing of the patriarch, the patriarch Yaakov, Jacob, that we have in Genesis chapter 49, I think around verse 8, concerning Yehuda, right, and so as we have Judah and kingship, and it's said to be Levi and priest and priesthood, right, this is from the ancient prophecy, even the the testament of the patriarchs. There's another ancient document that we also regard as sacred scripture. So we refer to the KJV, but we don't limit ourselves because in our study, our research, and our finding of the facts and the truth and the evidence, we see there's other scriptures that even the so-called ancient Christians or the early Christians observe that whitewashed Western Gentile Christians have chosen not to observe. This, was, this is why in the West there's like thousands of different denominations. It's confusion. It's, it's Babylon. But then the Messiah, right, Moshe Cheinu, he already told us that there'll be days like these, right? But getting to this particular point of, well, who is Yeshua to us? Well, the scripture speaks of him as being our Paschal Lamb. Now, we touched on that as well. Let's bring this up right here and let's get this right here. So this was just a, a related right, a related point. Right, a related point. Let's um let's uh let's go right here. A related point. Right. Yeah, okay, that's that point right there. Let's let's see if we there we go. So Passover, concerning our Passover. Right? So now not to be longer than we have to be on this particular point, right? We say that Yeshua HaNotzri, Jesus of Nazareth, who the, who the world called Jesus of Nazareth or Jesus Christ, that he is our, right? He is our Passover, right? According to what is written, let's bring this up right here, in 1 Corinthians, right? Chapter 5, verse 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye that y'all speaking to us may be a new lump, as ye y'all are unleavened. All right? Now, just in speaking of unleavened, if you're coming from a counterfeit Christian worldview, like a Gentile Christian worldview, they would not necessarily understand this unless they go into more study of what is leaven. What does leaven mean to high Yehudim? Since Yeshua said that salvation is mean the high Yehudim, is from the Yehudis, from the Jews, right? Leaven has to do with the first of the feast, the Mo'adei Yahuwah, the Mo'adei Yahweh, the Mo'adim, 
the appointed times. There's seven feasts that occur in three seasons, right? Beginning roughly from, say, like the April time to like the September, October time of the year, right? For about seven, seven moons, seven months. That's when the, the holy seasons, the appointed appointments of call Yisrael, especially the males of Yisrael, three times in the year shall all the males. So we have three holy season and seven feasts or festivals. Now, beginning off, we could say the ecclesiastical or the kahala, the called out assembly year, the time, right, begins off with Pesach, begins off with Passover. Now, Passover recalls the, you know, redemption of the Israelites out of, right, Egypt, right, by the hand of Moshe, right, by the hand of Moshe, by the hand of Aaron, and also Miriam. Miriam is a part of it. You, you can see in the other book of the prophet, one of the books of the prophet, it speaks about how Yahuwah, right, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, how he had sent um, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, right, to the children of Israel, right? So it's also important to, you know, note that there, but I'm pointing to that because that's when, pa that's Passover for the Yehudi, and the Yehudi, or rather, it's really for all Israel, but it was, came down to the tribe of Judah. It was the tribe of Judah that was the last standing. Sometimes I refer to that as like the, the last of the Jedi, right? The, the last of the Jedi, the last one, the Judah, Judahite, right? The Judah eye, right? The last of the Yehuda eye that was stand, or the last of the Israelites was the tribe of Judah, right? And Yeshua is from the tribe of Judah, right? So here, what the apostle, right? Paulos, uh, Paulos, Paulos, or Rav Shaul, Right? You also know him Hebraically by his Hebrew name, Shaul. What he's saying right here, he's instructing the assembly right, in Corinth, right, one of the Gentile territories where there were, you could say, Yehudi, Israelites, Hebrews, as well as, you know, Gentiles that had turned from the astray way to, to John's true way through the Messiah, through the teaching of Adonai, our Lord Rovain, right? So they would observe, and this is what's interesting, because Paul here is speaking concerning something that Gentiles would not necessarily know about, would not have familiarity. So Paul is speaking in the context of being a Yehudi, being a black Jew. Paul is speaking directly in that context, right? To both Jew and Gentile. He says, purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye, that y'all may be a new lump, right? This is something, the purging out, you know, of the leaven, right? During the time of the preparation for Pesach, right? We have this in, in um, Shemot, in the second book of Moshe, a Hebrew book called Exodus, right? And it says, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, and, and, and the significance of unleavened. Paul here, he, he summarizes, right, here in 1 Corinthians. You know, like when you're speaking to people who already know what you're talking about, you might not have to go along with it, but if also in the hearing and the audience is others, you might have to include some additional information so that others who are coming into this, this communion with us can understand, well, why we are doing this, right, and how this is connected with Moshiach with the Messiah, with Yeshua, with Christos, with Christ, right? So it says right here, for even Christ, Moshiach, our Passover is sacrificed for us. You know that right there, right? Is sacrificed or is slain, right? Is slain for us. It's like when one to one say, well, he died for you. He died for me, or, or this person died for us. Now, even that there we've touched on, the context there. What is the context there? Right? Because the context there could be that this person died because they were trying to save you, right? Or this person died, right, because of something that you did, it fell on them. 
So both contexts are true with HaMoshiach, Yeshua, for us, for the Mitmanan, right? So here, in going into the Hebrew, just quickly right here, right, looking at the Hebrew, right, these two verses, usually it's the unpointed, but many times the verses are one and the same, right, right here, bringing out the Hebrew, um, Ba'eru, Ba'eru et ha seor ha seor ha yasan ha yashan ha yashan ha yashan lima'ana tihiyu isa chedasha a new lamb uh, isa 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 chedasha isa chedasha hello lechem hello lechem matzot even hello is it not to say like almost is it not the lechem matzot the lechem the bread lechem matzot the matzot like the matzot the flat bread or hebraically unleavened bread right hello lechem matzot atem he says ki gam for ki for gamlan gamlan right for also like for or because also for us ki gam lanu fis fis geno it says fis geno fis geno like fisach fis geno here it's pointed as fis geno fis geno our fisach or fasika right ethiopic the israelites of ethiopia enunciate as fasika because they were Yehudi Jews, right, before they accepted Moshiach or Christ. Fisachenu, Fisachenu, right, Fisachenu, Ha Nizbach, Ha Nizbach, Ha Nizbach, Ha Nizbach, Ha Nizbach, that was sacrifice, right? Ba Edenu, Ba Edenu, Ba Edenu, like on our behalf or because of us, who, He, Ha Moshiach. Who ha Mushiach. So the important point or the part of the verse that we are seeking to zoom in on right here, let's see if we can do this right here, is this part of the verse. Right? That part of the verse, that's the part that says, for also, right, you know, our our Messiah, you know, was sacrifice. Ha Nizbach. Ha Nizbach. Ha Nizbach. Hanizbach, the Hanizbach being sacrificed. Fis Chenu, Fis Chenu. So he is our Passover. This verse basically brings out that he is our Passover that has been, now according to the Hebrew, let's just look at this once again. I'm going to look at the unpointed, right? The unpointed, right? The Hanizbach, same thing, the unpointed, right? Our Passover, right? Fis Chenu. Right, ha nizbach, right, and that's the coin of the coin of Greek right there, right. So he's our Passover. Now, what does this mean? How, how are we to take this in in context with what the Epistle to the Hebrews says? Right, it says right here. It says, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices that can never take away sins, right? So there's a difference in fischeinu, right? There's a difference in our, we say our lamb. So the lamb, the reference to the lamb also refers to what was said by um, John the Baptist. We call John the Baptist, right? who's like a, a seal of the prophets, Hebraically, right? According to the, the true interpretation. Let's go to Lamb of God. If we go to Lamb of God, right? Now, what's interesting is that the first verse that comes up is Bereshith, is Genesis, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, Bini, my son, right? Elohim will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together, now this is concerning the Akeda, right? The Akeda of Yitzhak, right? Of Isaac, right? What's known as the binding. Hebraically, Judaically, we say the binding, 
because looking at the Hebrew, he wasn't sacrificed. This is the thought that was prevailing. But in the retrospect, right, he was, it was the binding of Isaac. It's like in the, when we look at the wrestling of Jacob with, the, with Elohim, at first he was wrestling for man, who then was an angel uh, and then was God, right? So here's where we get to see the son, right? The Bain, Yeshua, right? The, the Emmanuel, right? God is with us, acting as that angel of the Lord, right? This is why explaining what occurred later on with Moshe when the angel was in the bush speaking, for God and as God, and then he turned away, and then a great revelation of the Hebrew Trinity. And I want to put this on the record, the Hebrew Trinity, the true Trinity. There's a Hebrew Trinity that precedes, that precedes and predates, right, the so-called first century time. This is why when Yeshua has spoken to, um, remember when Yeshua has spoken to, who was it? He spoke to um, Nicodemus. Right, concerning being born again, right? right? Now, Nicodemus is a rabban. He's, he's a rabbi, he, and the, the term rabban or rabbi, we have in Raboni for Yeshua, to our, our relationship with Yeshua is he is our rabbi. As he is the Lord of Lords, he is the rabbi of rabbis. He is Raboni, right? Raboni, Raboni. He is I and I, rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis. So that's his relationship. Right, and just in expressing what his relationship is 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 with us, right? So it was John, it was John that said something very interesting, Johannan, and we're speaking of John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist, he says right here, it might be on this page down here, it should be John, John the Apostle, is making reference to John the Baptist. See, that's all we have to distinguish who, because they both had the name Yohanan, Yohanan, right? Or Yohannes, Yohannan. So it says the next day, Yohannan, who is John, but which John? is John the Baptist, right? Seeth Yeshua, seeth Yeshua coming to him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim, who taketh away the sin of of the world now no see there's a difference so we have a testimony here of John the baptizer all right aka John the Baptist and who is making this uh, testimony right the testimony is being testified by John the Apostle right or who ones um, can call Saint John right so like the Saint John and so it is one, people might confuse that. We just spend a, a, just a moment on that because people could confuse the one, Yohanan, right, Hamatbil, right, Yohanan Hamatbil, right, with, um, you know, Yohannes, you know, Ahatalmid, right, with, with John the disciple, right, Hatalmid. Right? So we have Yohanan HaTalmid and Yohanan HaMatbil, right? Matbil, HaMatbil, the baptizer, the immerser. So it's this John, Yohanan, that saw Yeshua coming to him and says, Behold the Lamb of Elohim. Right? He says, The Lamb of Elohim who taketh away the sin of the world. Right? Who taketh away the sin. Now let's look at the Hebrew. Let's Let's get into, compare this verse and some of the different translations. So we look at the unpointed. Let's give us a moment. Look over the unpointed, right? And see if it's a consistent, right? So why he, me, machirat, why he, right? And it'd be, you know, in the next, the next machirat, uh, right? The next, like, day, you know, why yar. Wayar Yohanan, Wayar, Wayar Yohanan, Et Yeshua, Ba Elayo, Wayomar, Hine, Se Ha Elohim, Ha Nosea, Chatata Ha Olam. Right? So what Yohanan, 
right? Yohanan Hamat Abiel said, right, when he saw Yeshua by Lyo, by Lyo, Yeshua by Lyo coming to him, right? Why Yomar, and he said, Hine, behold, Seh, Ha Elohim, behold the Seh, Ha Elohim, the Lamb of the, the, the Elohim, the true good, the true God, right? The real Elohim. Se ha Elohim ha no se ha no se ha no se that lift up or bears chatat chatat so chatat the sin the lack chatat ha olam the chatat ha olam so he identifies Yeshua here as the se the se se ha Elohim the se he ne se ha Elohim that he is the se ha Elohim. He is the Lamb of God, right? Now, what was the, the animal type that was used, right? The animal type that was used, right? So with the Moshiach, what we get is a crossing over from the partial aspects, right? Even the carnal, the natural aspects, right? Into the supernatural, the spiritual Right, from like the physical to the metaphysical, the higher is is a graduation, is what the the faithful Yehudi right were to receive, right, and only a small remnant did, but a great majority he came to his own and his own didn't receive him. Doesn't mean that none of his people received him, but it meant that the great majority didn't receive him. So when we look at the events of the seclet, the seclet. Right, like crucifixion, right? You know what occurred at the crucifixion, when it occurred at the crucifixion, is more than what we would say is coincidence. So, 1900 years ago, to the black Yehudi and the Yehudi who who believed, we would say, or who believed, who admitted, right, that yes, Yeshua, right, and truly in spirit and in truth truly recognize that Yeshua is the Messiah, they also saw the, the beyond coincidence of the events that took place and how these events that took place in his, in their time w concerning him, right, who they already had faith in, fulfilled, right, even what the prophecy said and then they began to look more diligently into the books of the prophet. Even we have the Ethiopian Yehudi, right? The Ethiopian Jew, the black Jew of Ethiopia, that's called the treasurer and the official or the eunuch of Queen Henteke, Kenteke, Candace, right? He's returning from his worship. He went to Jerusalem to worship. So he's returning from his worship. And what is he doing? He's reading a scroll of Yeshayahu, of Yeshayahu, right? Of, of Isaiah, Isaiah. Right? And he's right there, right? Wounded for our, you know what I mean? He, he bruised, he has you bruised for our, and he was wounded, you know? Who is this speaking of? Is he speaking of himself or of another? And this is where the apostle Philippos or Philip came and they reason in the baptism. We have this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter, chapter 8, right? And then he takes that word forward. Right to we say Ethiopia, right? Or the Ethiopia, but actually to Maraue, to to east of the river now, right? So we see that link right there. So what what does the scripture show us, right? It show us that the Passover, what occurred concerning Yeshua, right? The Passover that concerned Yeshua was his the fulfillment of his ministry, how it fulfilled. And then what it caused those to reflect on later on and say, Chan, he did this, he did that, and this was concerning him, but yet we didn't see that then, right? And this became the testimonies that we have even in what's called the New Testament, right? These testimonies that we have, right, in the New Testament concerning the Moshiach. But now, Passover is twofold, right? Passover is also refers to the coming out of the exile of the Israelites. Had he come to his, his own and his own received him, right, would have been the full regathering of all Israel at that time, right? 
right? That sense of the Passover, coming out of bondage, coming out of captivity, that's what would have occurred. But that was put off by the disbelief or the unbelief of the people. And the reason why his people didn't receive him, right, was because something was wrong with their soul, something wrong with their spirit. They had a wrong spirit in them. So the spiritual aspects, right, the atonement and the spiritual aspects, it speaks to that as well. Through the, through the, the Hebrew mythos or the context of the elemental elements concerning Passover, concerning when the crucifixion, the death, the burial, the resurrection, even the resurrection of Moshia, right, that third day later, right, and now that's another point right there, because a lot of people say, was it really three days and three nights, because of how the counterfeit Christians, right, have changed laws and times. They've made Friday, right, to Sunday, be three days and three nights, right? And Friday in the evening, right? Friday after, like after three, after three and before six, when the Moshiach was said to have been taken down off of the, off of what's called the cross or the cross tree, because both refer to as a cross and a tree, right? And those two witnesses really explain what it was. Right? It was a slab of wood that was nailed to a tree. Right? And that tree was a sentinel's tree in a place that was called the place of the skull or Golgotha. Right? Golgotha in the Hebrew. Golgotha is a skull. It refers to the pole tax or, the, or that polling of the Israelites when they are numbered to go into the promised land after they came out of Egypt. We have that in the um, numbers. That's the verse that a lot of Israelites look at in the, you say, in the temporal, in the Old Testament um, sense of the, the pedigree, you know, when the number of the hosts, because they were supposed to be the vanguard, and they never made it in because the Lord wasn't pleased with them. So it's kind of ironic that many Hebrew Israelites would adapt that as their starting point because it didn't really end too well for them because ones are looking at things in their way and not trying to see, well, what is he showing us? What is he really revealing to us? What is really being revealed? And what does that mean? Not what I want to make it mean or I want to make it seem to me. You know, so some of these questions, when they come up and we go through a vlog, like we're going through right here, this little vlog to just address it, is he the last Passover? Right? It's a very interesting question, right? because the scripture says he's the last Adam, right? and the scripture also says that he is our Passover, right? but he, it doesn't say that he is the last Passover or he is our, you know, he is our last Passover. It doesn't say that. Is he our Passover? Yes, he's our Passover. Is he the last Passover? No, he's not the last Passover. There is still to be that Passover in the context of the first type for the Israelites scattered right, in captivity in foreign lands. And we have that according to the prophets. And the two do not contradict. It just means that if ones don't really get it or don't want to get it, it's because they have a foreign mind. They have a foreign mind. You know, they, they, they're, they're like a Gentile. A Gentile, we wouldn't expect a Gentile to necessarily agree right with these things because what the gospel says in some ways is destruction of their gentile world order to establish the people the chosen people of god right as the keepers of the true god's world order so in the process there is a change it's like the the, the slaves the enslaved hebrews over here and Negroes and, you know, Jews, black Jews over here in this North country used to say, bottom rail on top, Massa, bottom rail on top. That means, you know, you got to flip around those rails in order to make this work, right? And the Gentile Christians have to recognize our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, that he is black. And that the Israelites, the Jews are black. The true Jews of the Bible are black. Can they be converted Jews? I guess in some sense, because they were strangers, it does mention the stranger, right, who has come over to us and the stranger that will take hold of our fringes, you know, so it doesn't mention them, but it mentions each in their particular order, 
right? It even says in Christ that there's each in its particular order, like first to the Jew and then to the Gentile, each in his particular order. So there is a message of the gospel, right? Even for the other nations, there's a message. Now, the good among them take it as good news, it all in all. The bad among the Gentiles, well, they might, like, you know, like some, some white Christians and Gentile-minded Christians, whether they're white or black or whatever, you know, they're like, well, they like the New Testament, right? But they don't like the Old Testament God, you know, so-called, right? Well, he's still one and the same, right? Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. I hear Israel, he who be who he be, our Elohim is one, he who be who he be. He be, he become, right? He wills it to be or to become whatever way he please to fulfill his word and to fulfill his prophecy and to fulfill his, his will, basically. You know what I'm saying? So this is, <laughs> this is he, right? Who be who he be. But he does not contradict himself. Right? Where ones think that the Bible or that God contradicts himself, they are either imagining, right, a contradiction, right, or they need to really study deeper, right? Or somebody, you know, or the pen of the scribes, or the pen of the scribes is lying, right? The pen of the scribes is lying. Because a lot of people, you know, have said certain things about this gospel, you know, in Christianity, and we're mainly talking about the white, white Christianity, you know, or wasp Christianity because they call themselves white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And then we get to find out that the Protestants, right, especially the white ones, were the greatest whitewashers of black art. And then look how they lie. They first said that they didn't want no art, no pictures in their churches. They didn't want no black pictures. So they whitewashed everything, had everything really plain. After a little bit of time, they started to repaint the pictures in their own image. You see the hypocrisy right there? But anyway, he is our Passover, right? He is the last Adam. And to get into a little more detail, hopefully in another vlog, we show this briefly. Uh, we don't know what the book is like. We're not really advocating the book, and we're not disadvocating or not advocating the book. In fact, now I come to think of it, I'm going to see if we can get a good copy of this particular book. You know, just to check it out. Because the word art that it has right here, right? The word art right here is a book by Mark MacWertha. Brings out the typology from Old Testament to New Testament concerning true worship. In other words, this context right here, right? And, of course, you see it. It's like in the shadow. It's called, I think the book is called The Shadow of the Cross. Right? how the cross or what Christ fulfilled in the first advent, you know, the crucifixion, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, right? How that fulfilled and what it fulfilled according to the tabernacle. This is what the first century Hebrews and Yehudi, you know, the black Jews who believe in the Hebrews, right? What they got. And this is what essentially the epistle to the Hebrews brings out. That's why we keep saying that the epistle to the Hebrews is the gospel that was to be preached to the Israelites in captivity right, during the apostolic and during those apostolic times. Right? And who wrote it? Well, it's the hand of Paul. If you can study like text, if you study text, we've studied this, Right? You can see different, like, like different, different books in the Bible, going from Old Testament to New Testament. If you read the Hebrew and you study the Hebrew and you become familiar with the Hebrew, you begin to um, um, recognize the fingerprint, the signature. You know what I'm saying? You begin to recognize the signature of people. It, it's, it's almost like somebody text messages you, text message you, right? And you, you get the text message. You know, you could tell if it's somebody or if it's said in a certain way. You know, like, they're using the same words. They're using words for how different people communicate, you know, and how different people write. That's what they talk about, like, even sometimes people study penmanship, right? And they could tell, like, like if somebody counterfeits somebody's signature, if it's a good attempt at a counterfeit, 
But if something gives them away, somebody who's really diligent and really study will find out, okay, that right there gave them away. And they might be able to find out exactly who was counterfeiting because some things, you know what I mean? But that takes, for us, it, seemed, it might seem like magic to somebody. But for somebody who really applies the principles to it and has that diligence, right, this is, this is where ones are praised for, for good work and good diligence, Right? And ones need to do more diligence, especially my, my, I and I fellow like Hebrew and Israelite brothers, and many of them are to some degree, you know, and that is good. But to answer the question concerning Christ and the sacrificial types, right, this is a good kind of a word pick right here. And we like to do a couple of vids on some subjects, subject themes, hit up hit us up at the contact. Also be sure to download the you know the podcast app in the description. Also have some new um web uh hopefully social friendly web um sites, you know, some updates coming forward. But we have the, the live app, you know, where you can listen live on the air because there seems to be some sort of on some phone services when you call into the podcast. You know, calling to the podcast on T-Mobile, Metro PCS. Sometimes they say you might be charged a penny a minute and ones might not be up for such a thing. Though it's not really a lot. And, you know, to get what ones get if ones is able to receive it. You know what I mean? Um, Kibalta, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, so you check, out, check us out, the podcast app. Send forward some questions. I think the contact at Rastafari Groundation can also be good some of the link you know the links we're going to update some of the links as well but anyway brothers and sisters the fulfillment has to do with the brazen altar the brazen altar and the brazen laver right the brazen altar the brazen laver is right there right because the approach right here is a layout of the ark right that they say see in christ and his church or his his congregation is called out assembly in the tabernacle, the pattern, the pattern. And uh, find it in Exodus. We're studying Exodus in this area of the tabernacle, the furniture. You see the Ark of the Covenant right there. There's the Ark right there, right? There's the altar of incense, right? And that is in the second room, the Holy of Holy. Then in the first room, right? In the first room, you have the the lampstand and the table of shoe bread, right? It seems as though earlier the altar of incense was in the second room, right? But it seems as though right right before there was a veil. We have other there's other um, layouts where ones can look at some of the possible alignment and description. But this is pretty accurate in its orientation, although in the original it seemed as though the altar of incense, right, the golden altar of incense, the great worship is the Aishans, that actually was outside of the of the curtain, of the curtain, right, of the parroquet, right? Um, and later when we look elsewhere in the Bible, the scripture where it refers to the ark and the worship, it seemed as though the the golden altar was on the other side of the veil. There was a veil separating the two rooms. Now, outside of the tent itself was the golden, uh, it was no gold, it was the brazen, slika, slakia, uh, slika, right? It was the, the, the brazen basin, that's the brazen basin right there, like to wash before the priest would enter into the holy place, right? And then you had the, the brazen um, altar, right? And this is why many say that when it says that Christ's feet were like brass, like, bra like brass, like burnt, like brass burnt in the fire, like, you know what I mean? That reflects on twofold, a twofold of it, that both his feet, since we know he was a Yehudi, a Jew, a black Jew, and all, we have the iconography that they try to whitewash, you know, the cover up is worse than the crime, you know? So that's one aspect. So it's both true that his feet are the feet of a black man, we can say, and 
that it reflects this brazen altar. So in the, the Nazarene, right, and the later Christian language, right, concerning Christ, it takes on tabernacle um, connotations, tabernacle dimensions, right? Like, let us come, you know, to, like, we have an altar where those who serve at the altar have no right to eat. That's in Hebrews, right? So a real Hebrew would understand what it means. One who is truly a Hebrew, who has truly crossed over, as it were, you know, that's, that's what Hebrew means to cross over, you know, from a carnal mentality to the true Messiah mind, that anointed mind. So understanding, you know, likeness with likeness and don't get caught up on what the, you remember the, um, the disciples when he went to the feast and Christ mentioned about the leaven, right? He said, when you go, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, right? And they immediately thought that he meant don't eat no bread and they were hungry physically. He was using these words to speak to a psychological, spiritual, psycho-spiritual aspect to be aware of the deception, right? Of the, of the, like the, the, the ultra, Almost like the ultra orthodox, you know, pseudo, you know, the, you know, you know, the church, church folks out there, you know, who are overdoing it. The, the religious establishment, we say the establish, you know, the religious establishment, as it were, right? So more on that, as well as the altar of Aishans, you know, coming forward, 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 right? So stay tuned. More on the Passover, looking forward, right? in this season it's interesting right here all right I have to touch on that all right because it says you provoke us to anger for people who are no people you see it there